Live your passion. Agricultural technicians support day-to-day -day farming operations, taking care of important functions such as maintenance and safety. They add value towards improving overall farming productivity. An agricultural technician has a well-rounded skill set that includes a knowledge of farming operations, the ability to maintain industry equipment and an awareness of various farming procedures. Introducing Sirka Canalelo, an agricultural technician employed by Avagro, a commercial horticulture entity based at Farm Shalom on the banks of the Swakop River. This is her story. Surga Kanalelo was born in Vintuk but grew up at Oshipumbu Shomuhongo village outside Oshakati in Oshana. A proud product of Ongwediva's Mweshipandeka Senior Secondary School. Surga's interest in gardening started at a very young age. Working in her Green Finger Aunt's vegetable garden instilled in her an appreciation for tilling and cultivation. Like we had a garden at home, my aunt, she loves green, she has a passion for green. So she wanted the whole backyard filled up with plants. So we had a garden, we had, um, so we had sweet potatoes, we had um, sugar cane, uh, we, had, um, we, had, we used to grow spinach and um, some, uh, a few fruit trees. So with that, you know, each day after, when you come from after school, you have to go, at, uh, it was always a hard working day. After, after school, you know, you're going to the back of the garden to either weed or to harvest or to prune and things like that. So from that age, that's the time we decided, okay, this, what, what, what she's teaching us is something very important. What happens here is we are being taught how to take care of plants. We are being taught how to groom plants. And we are also self-sufficient to the fact that we don't go to the shops anymore to buy, um, to buy spinach, to buy sugar cane, to buy sweet potatoes. So it's something that is already there. So it's something that uh, struck me. It, it struck me at a very young age, primary school, that okay, if we can do this in one day, at the larger scale, then one day we can be able to feed the nation. We can be able to sustain ourselves in a way that is not so costly and things like that. Having experienced the value their vegetable garden added to her family's upkeep, whilst enjoying delicious, fresh produce at lower food costs, played a big role in Circa's career decision. Her results were good and secured her entry to the University of Namibia, where she enrolled for a degree course in environmental sciences. During my research project, my final year project thesis, I, I decided to research on um, kitchen grey water, the water that is discarded from the kitchen, whether it's soapy or clean or it has um, reusing this water for uh, vegetable production, whereby I grew spinach with the assistance of my supervisors and fellow students. I grew spinach, so three plots I was applying with uh, direct water, direct uh, grey water. The three other plots, uh, the, the one, the treated water, the, the treated one with a uh, pool shock. And then the third one was the normal water that we normally use. And it was interesting enough to find out that the grey water, the kitchen water, the untouched, the, just the, the way it is apl applied directly, it showed um, faster germination rate, it showed a high biomass. And also after that, I carried out a micro microbial analysis to assess whether the, whether the fruits, the spinach, because I use spinach, the spinach is conducive for human consumption. It even showed that um, the that grey water, the grey water, the treated and untreated grey water had um, have very less less contaminants, they are less co contaminated so it's very very safe to, for human consumption. But then the, the canal water had uh, a lot of more contaminants so which was a recommendation that I made that at least it should be analysed so that they can, it can at least be treated before it is used. After obtaining her Bachelor of Science degree majoring in crop production, Sirka started job hunting. Her go-getter attitude and drive to succeed made it easy for her lecturers to recommend her 
to the Evergrow company, where she is today considered a major asset in its visionary long-term objective to empower Namibians in general and agriculture graduates specifically with practical skill sets towards setting up own agriculture businesses. Basically, when she came uh, with uh, her graduation, I found she has only the theoretical knowledge. There is not so much on practical. It means Avagro, we have designed the training course. So just I covered that topics for three months, vegetable production, from uh, how we say the nursery preparation to the harvesting, packaging, intercultivation, irrigation, all the parts uh, topic wise we covered and we made or I made her train and uh, she is the best example to the country within short period she just uh, become a well trained and I hope for the students like Sirka if I get it here I can make millions of students ready to run the agriculture business for the Namibia. A key expectation for agriculture technicians in commercial farming setups is to evaluate how the environment impacts farming in order to help improve overall farming operations and productivity. To do this, they conduct experiments, collect and analyze data and prepare reports based on their findings. Sirka has taken to this environment like fish to water. We start off with a, with a small a mini meeting to tell everyone uh, that, um, well, who does what, who goes where, because here at Shalom jobs are broken that we have what is called division of labor, like a team building, whereby jobs are, bro are broken down into smaller components so that uh, different people get to perform separate tasks. Through that, um, a lot of work is done in a day and not only one, one of the, one, um, one component of the work was sorted, but every different um, different components were sorted. So that's why we, we start with a morning uh, briefing. We say who's going to do what, who's going to do what, where and how and things like that. So it's just a quick meeting, maybe less than five to 10 minutes uh, so that everybody knows that uh, after this, I'm going to do this so that no one is standing and say, okay, I have nothing to do, what can I do? So it's always like a, it's like a daily schedule of say, you do this after this, you do this, and after this you go and do it. So after the briefing, I start off with my morning rounds, checking the greenhouses, greenhouse monitoring. Greenhouses monitoring, I walk around, I always walk around carry my notebook and my pen. So I walk around with that, I go through all the greenhouses. The first thing I look at is the thermometer, the temperature. If the temperature needs to be at a certain level where plants are able to grow and be able to photosynthesize, to flower, to fruit, and then I focus on the plants themselves. The plants itself, the cultural practices. I look at the water, the irrigation. Is the, uh, pl are the plants looking dry? Do they need more water? Then I also look at the pipe holes, make sure that the water is running out for, and each plant is getting enough water. Second, you, you look at the support, support structure. With the vegetables, we have what is called, we have coiling. They are joined to their own ropes that are support system because it's not like the soil. The soil has um, firm uh, uh, root structure, deep root structure, root, root zone. Then uh, I look at things like um, the plant itself, okay, the general uh, plant itself. How does it look? At, is there diseases? Is there some plants? You look at the fruits, you can look at the flowers. With the fruits, you look at the, the size, the color, also the, 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 I say the texture. So if it's too, for example, the peppers, if it's too soft and then it still needs to be kept there. So you look at those things. Sirka doesn't shy away from the sometimes hard physical labor in often inclement weather that comes with her job. I come from a community, from a background, a community of strong women. My village, we have an orchard, it's funded by the Ministry of Agriculture, which is not doing really quite well at the moment. So that shows that we need more women in agriculture in Namibia. If that, those people in Zambia can do it, or Kenya can do it, or Uganda can do it, why not have Namibians where you bring women on board to be able to run a farm? We want women farmers, uh, female, females that are becoming farm managers or just doing very well in the agricultural um, uh, sectors. We started the program, uh, uh, high-tech agriculture, for women empowerment uh, 
for the uh, in agriculture for the country uh, women empowerment and development if we train the mothers the children slow by slow they will develop the agriculture in them also because mothers if they strong in the agriculture definitely children will come on that platform this is the basic idea so that's why we have trained more than 12 uh, women or 12 ladies here for vegetable production for flower production also those coming students uh, nearly 80% of the students are the ladies or women so we promoting more women side to make them uh, uh, self stand for the country development if you feed mother then you feed nation having experienced how the agriculture sector continues to gain prominence and how the need for the skilled and qualified agriculture technicians continues to grow surka channels all her time and energy towards supporting her employer's business objectives to realize her dream to one day establish and manage her own crop production facility in the beginning is always a struggle so when it comes to agriculture agriculture is an investment you start big, you start uh, you earn you start small but then you have to spend quite a lot then after 3 years we'll be able to say okay we start harvesting we start we start selling we start selling to um, people start knowing who we are people can start sending us finances finances so we can build more greenhouses we start uh, teaching people what to do how to do it and people can carry it out to other regions Away from the greenhouses and plantations, Sirka keeps her circle small and prefers to surround herself with like-minded peers who are equally as passionate about the agricultural sector. <laughs> okay, um, this is my friend Helena. She's um, here for in Swagop to join us at uh, Farm Shalom for a training program, six months. So she just arrived today, and they'll be starting uh, immediately tomorrow. She graduated um, two or three weeks back from UNAM um, under the Faculty of Agriculture and Natural Resources. So her specialization is crop science. So that's why she's joining uh, Farm Shalom. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I have known her for a while. Uh, we school together, high school, and then varsity also were together at UNAM. So we're doing our BSc. So and then she left me there. And then now I just followed her. So wherever she goes, I go. That's why I'm here with it. <laughs> Sirka Kanalelo, far-sighted and driven, focused and passionate. Despite her youth, this visionary young woman is surely destined for greater things in leveraging our country's agriculture sector and in tapping the potential it holds for community empowerment and food security. Her story teaches us not to waste time chasing success and others, but to appreciate that every flower blooms at a different pace. That as long as you excel at your own passion and perfecting it, you will achieve success and then success will come chasing after you. She is living her dream. She is living her passion. Live Your Passion is supported by the European Union. 